the President of the European Commission is the head of the European Commission a Euro the executive branch of the European Union a Euro the most powerful office holder in the EU. The President is responsible for allocating portfolios to members of the Commission and can reshuffle or dismiss them if needed. They determine the Commission's policy agenda and all the legislative proposals it produces. The Commission President also represents the EU abroad together with the President of the European Council and the High Representative. The President of the Commission, unlike a head of government, does not determine foreign policy, command troops or raise taxes. The post was established in 1958 and is elected by the European Parliament, on a proposal of the European Council for five-year terms. Once elected, he or she, along with the Commission, is responsible to Parliament which can censure the President. The current President is Jose Copyright Manuel Barroso, who took office in October 2004. He is a member of the European People's Party and is the former Prime Minister of Portugal. Barroso is the 11th President and in 2009 was re-elected for a further five years. His Vice President, as of 2010, is High Representative Catherine Ashton, Baroness Ashton of Yerfoland. History the President of the European Commission was established in 1957 with the European Commission. Previously it was merely a post of primus inter pairs but had an increasing impact on the community. Under Jacques Delors it became increasingly presidential in style and now is the dominant force in the Commission, although coped by crises such as the resignation of the Santa Commission. Establishment Before the establishment of the present European Commission, there was the high authority of the European coal and steel community. In 1957 the present Commission was established by the Treaty of Rome, and it also replaced the high authority in the Commission of Euratom in 1967. The Commission's first president was Walter Holstein who started consolidating European law and began to impact on national legislation. National governments took little heed of his administration at first with the President having to stamp the Commission's authority early on. With the aid of the European Court of Justice the Commission began to be taken more seriously. In 1965 Holstein put forward his proposals for the Common Agricultural Policy, which would give the community its own financial resources while giving more power to the Commission and Parliament and removing the veto power over agriculture and the Council. These proposals led to an immediate backlash from France. Holstein knew the proposals would be contentious, and took personal charge of drafting them, overriding the Agriculture Commissioner. However he did gain the support of Parliament through his proposals to increase its powers, and he also presented his policy to Parliament a week before he submitted them to the Council. He aimed to demonstrate how he thought the community ought to be run in the hopes of generating a wave of pro-Europeanism big enough to get past the objections of member states. However in this it proved that, despite its past successes, Holstein was overconfident in his risky proposals. In reaction to Holstein's proposals and actions, then French President, Charles de Gaulle, who was skeptical of the rising supranational power of the Commission, accused Holstein of acting as if he were a head of state. France eventually withdrew its representative from the Council, triggering the notorious empty chair crisis. Although this was resolved under the Luxembourg Compromise, Holstein became the scapegoat for the crisis. The Council refused to renew his term, despite being the most dynamic leader until Jacques Delors. 1967 to Euro 85, Holstein's work did enable the Commission to be a real player. During the 1970s the presidents were involved in the major political projects of the day, such as the European Monetary Union. In 1970, President Jean Ray secured the community's own financial resources and in 1977, President Roy Jenkins became the first Commission president to attend a G7 summit on behalf of the community. However due to problems such as the 1973 oil crisis and the 1979 energy crisis, Economic hardship put the European ideal on the back burner, with only the President trying to keep the idea alive. The member states had the upper hand and they created the European Council to discuss topical problems, yet the Council was unable to keep the major projects on track such as the Common Agricultural Policy. 
the community entered a period of eurosclerosis due to economic difficulties and disagreements on the community budget, and by the Thorn Commission the president was unable to exert his influence to any significant extent. Presidentialism However the commission began to recover under President Jacques Delors' commission. He is seen as the most successful president, being credited with having given the community a sense of direction and dynamism. The International Herald Tribune noted the work of Delors at the end of his second term in 1992, Mr. Delors rescued the European community from the doldrums. He arrived when Europessimism was at its worst. Although he was a little-known finance minister and former MEP, he breathed life and hope into the EC and into the dispirited Brussels Commission. In his first term, from 1985 to 1988, he rallied Europe to the call of the single market, and when appointed to a second term he began urging Europeans toward the far more ambitious goals of economic, monetary and political union. But dealers not only turned the community around, he signalled a change in the presidency. Before he came to power the commission president still was a position of first among equals, when he left office he was the undisputed icon and leader of the community. His tenure has produced a strong presidency and a strong commission as the president became more important. Following treaties cemented this change, with the president being given control over the allocation of portfolios and being able to force the resignation of commissioners. When President Romano Prodi took office with the new powers of the Treaty of Amsterdam, he was dubbed by the press as Europe's first prime minister. President Dealer's work had increased the powers of parliament, whose support he had enjoyed. However, later commissions did not enjoy the same support and in 1999 Parliament used its powers to force the Santa Commission to resign. Parliamentary Oversight Historically, the Council appointed the Commission President and the whole body by unanimity without input from Parliament. However with the Treaty on European Union in 1993, Parliament gained the right to be consulted on the appointment of a president and to veto the commission as a whole. Parliament decided to interpret its right to be consulted as a right to veto the president, which the council reluctantly accepted this right of veto was formalized in the Amsterdam Treaty. The Treaty of Nice changed the council's vote from a unanimous choice to one that merely needed a qualified majority. This meant that the weight of the parliament in the process increased resulting in a quasi-parliamentary system where one group could be in government. This became evident in 2004 when numerous candidates were put forward and a centre-right vote won out over left-wing groups in France and Germany. Barroso was then forced to back down over his choice of commissioners due to parliament's threat that it would not approve his commission. In 2009, the European People's Party endorsed Barroso as their candidate for commission president and the party subsequently retained their position as largest group in that year's elections. The Socialists responded by pledging to put forward a rival candidate at future elections. Barroso once again was forced by Parliament to make a change to his proposed commission but eventually received assent. However in exchange for approval. Parliament forced some concessions from Barroso in terms of parliamentary representation at Commission and international meetings. On September 7, 2010, Barroso gave the first US-style State of the Union address to Parliament, which focused primarily on the EU's economic recovery and human rights. The speech is to be annual. Appointment Article 17 of the Treaty on European Union, as amended by the Treaty of Lisbon lays out the procedure for appointing the president and his team. The European Council votes by qualified majority for a nominee for the post of president, taking account of the latest European elections. This proposal is then put before Parliament which must approve or veto the appointment. If an absolute majority of MEPs support the nominee, he she is elected. The president then, together with the Council, puts forward his team to the Parliament to be scrutinized. The Parliament normally insists that each one of them appear before the parliamentary committee that corresponds to their prospective portfolio for a public hearing. The Parliament then votes on the Commission as a whole and, if approved, the European Council, acting by a qualified majority, appoints the President and his team to office. Transparency, 
qualified majority in the council has led to more candidates being fielded while there has been greater politicization due to the involvement of parliament and the change of policy direction in the EU from the creation of the single market to reform of it. However despite this, the choice within the council remains largely behind closed doors. During the appointment of Santa, discussions were kept in private with the media relying on insider leaks. MEPs were angry with the process, against the spirit of consultation that the new EU treaty brought in. Pauline Green MEP, leader of the Socialist Group, stated that her group thought Parliament should refuse to condone a practice which so sullies the democratic process. There were similar deals in 1999 and 2004 saw a repeat of Santa's appointment when Barroso was appointed through a series of secret meetings between leaders with no press releases on the negotiations being released. This was sharply criticized by MEPs such as the Liberal Group leader Graham Watson who described the procedure as a justice lipsius carpet market producing only the lowest common denominator. While Green EFA co-leader Daniel Cohnburn did ask Barroso after his first speech if you were the best candidate, why were you not the first? Criteria The candidate selected by the council has often been a leading national politician but this is not a requirement. The choice of president must take into account the result of the latest parliamentary elections. That provision was not in force in the nomination in 2004 but the centre-right European People's Party who won the elections pressured for a candidate from its own ranks. In the end, the EPP candidate was chosen, Jose Copyright Manuel Barroso. On the same basis, the EPP endorsed again Barroso for a second term during the 2009 European elections campaign and, after winning again the elections, was able to secure his nomination by the European Council. Further criteria seen to be influencing the choice of the council include, which area of Europe the candidate comes from, favoured as Southern Europe in 2004. The candidate's political influence, credible yet not overpowering members. Language, proficiency in French considered necessary by France. And degree of integration, their state being a member of both the Eurozone and the Schengen Agreement. There is an assumption that there is a rolling agreement along these lines that a president from a large state is followed by a president from a small state, and one from the political left will be followed by one from the political right. Roy Jenkins was followed by Gaston Thorne, Jacques Delors, Jacques Santa, Romano Prodi, and Jose Barroso. However, despite these assumptions, these presidents have usually been chosen during political battles and coalition building. Dealers was chosen following a Franco-British disagreement over Claude Kearson, Santa was a compromise after Britain vetoes Jean-Luc de Hayon and Prodi was backed by a coalition of 13 states against the Franco-German preference for Guy Verhofstadt. Elections, in February 2008, President Barroso admitted that despite the president having in theory as much legitimacy as heads of governments, in practice it was not the case. The low voter turnout creates a problem for the president's legitimacy, with the lack of a European political sphere, but analysts claim that if citizens were voting for a list of candidates for the post of president, turnout would be much higher than that seen in recent years. Under the Treaty of Lisbon the European Council has to take into account the results of the latest European elections and, furthermore, the parliament elects, rather than simply approve, the council's proposed candidate. This was taken as the Parliament's cue to have its parties run with candidates for the President of the Commission with the candidate of the winning party being proposed by the Council. This was partly put into practice in 2004 when the European Council selected a candidate from the political party which secured a plurality of votes in that year's election. However at that time only a minor party had run with a specific candidate, the then fourth-placed European Green Party who had the first true pan-European political party with a common campaign, put forward Daniel Cohnburn did and lost even their fourth place in the following election becoming only the fifth largest group in 2009 and diminishing their candidates' chances further. However the winning European People's Party only mentioned four or five people as candidates for president. There have been plans to strengthen the European political parties in order for them to propose candidate for future elections. The European Liberal Democrat and Reform Party indicated, in its October 2007 Congress, 
its intention to forward a candidate for the post as part of a common campaign but failed to do so. However the European People's Party did select Barroso as their candidate and, as the largest party, Barroso's turn was renewed. The Socialists, disappointed at the 2009 election, agreed to put forward a candidate for commission president at all subsequent elections. After a campaign within that party to have open primaries for said candidate, the PES Congress gathering in Brussels in November 2011 decided that PES would designate its candidate for commission president through primaries taking place in January 2014 in each of its member parties and organizations, before a ratification of the results by an extraordinary PES Congress in February 2014. The EPP will choose its candidate at its next Congress on 6 Euro March 7, 2014 in Dublin, for which the nomination process started on February 13, 2014. Spazen candidate, according to the treaties, the President of the European Commission is nominated by the European Council. Until 2004. This nomination was based on an informal consensus for a common candidate. But in 2004 the centre-right European People's Party rejected the consensus approach ahead of the European Council meeting and pushed through their own candidate, Barroso. In 2013, in preparation for the European elections of 2014, Martin Schulz, then President of the European Parliament campaigned for the parliamentary party groups to name led candidates for the post of President of the European Commission. His own party group, the centre-left Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats named Schultz as their lead candidate. The Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe group and the Greens a Euro-European Free Alliance then named their own lead candidates, as did the European People's Party. The German term for led candidates caught on, and they became known informally as Spazenkandidaten. The European Conservatives and Reformists, now the third largest of the political groups, did not name a candidate, objecting to the principle of Spazenkandidaten and its tenuous basis in law. The basis in law for the Spazenkandidaten was an amendment to the Treaty on European Union by the Treaty of Lisbon, which came into force on December 1, 2009. The amendment added the wording taking into account the elections to the European Parliament, so that Article 17.7 now included the wording. Taking into account the elections to the European Parliament and after having held the appropriate consultations, the European Council, acting by a qualified majority, shall propose to the European Parliament a candidate for President of the Commission. Commentators argued that the wording of Article 17 does not justify any entitlement to a euro automatic or odyssey in a euro for the European Parliament or its members to effectively nominate the President of the Commission. It was called a sneaky maneuver on the part of the European Parliament, which is ever eager to grab powers from the heads of state and government. David Cameron, Mark Rutt, Frederick Rienfeldt and Victor Alba N were among several European Prime Ministers that publicly opposed the Spazen candidate procedure. Term of Office The President is elected for a renewable five-year term starting six months after the elections to the European Parliament. These were brought into alignment via the Maastricht Treaty and the elections take place in June every five years. This alignment has led to a closer relationship between the elections and the president himself with the above-mentioned proposals for political parties running with candidates. The president and his commission may be removed from office by a vote of censure from parliament. Parliament has never done this to date, however the threat of this happening in 1999 due to allegations of financial mismanagement led to the Santa Commission resigning on its own accord, before the parliament forced them out. Duties and powers, the President of the European Commission is the most powerful position in the European Union, controlling the Commission which collectively has a monopoly on all Union legislation and is responsible for ensuring its enforcement. The President controls the policy agenda of the Commission for his term and in practice no policy can be proposed without the President's agreement. The role of the President is to lead the Commission, and give direction to the Commission and the Union as a whole. The treaties state that the Commission shall work under the political guidance of its President, this is conducted through his calling and chairing of meetings of the College of Commissioners, his personal cabinet and the meetings of the heads of each Commissioner's cabinet. The President may also force a Commissioner to resign. 
the work of the Commission as a body is based on the principle of cabinet collective responsibility, however in his powers he acts as more than a first among equals. The role of the President is similar to that of a national prime minister chairing a cabinet. The President also has responsibility for representing the Commission in the Union and beyond. For example, he is a member of the European Council and takes part in debates in Parliament and the Council of Ministers. Outside the Union he attends the meetings of the G8 to represent the Union. However in foreign affairs, he does have to compete with several commissioners with foreign affairs related portfolios, the High Representative for the Common Foreign and Security Policy and the President of the European Council. The presidential system had started to develop since Jack Dealers and has since been cemented. However, externally he is still dependent on support from the Council and Parliament. Dealers had enjoyed the Parliament's and the Council's support for his whole term, and due to his work the Parliament increased in powers and the Council increased in membership. The membership is now so large the President is increasingly unable to garner the support of all the states, even though the job is supposed to try to keep everyone happy. The Parliament now has more powers over the Commission and can reject its proposals, although the Commission has little power over Parliament, such as the ability to dissolve it to call new elections. The President's office is on the top, 13th, floor of the Berlaymont building in Brussels. The President receives his political guidance from his cabinet, the head of which acts as a political bodyguard for the President. Such factors can lead to an isolation of the President from outside events. For the European Civil Service the President has a very high status, due to his immense authority and symbolism within the body. The President exercises further authority through the Legal Service and Secretariat General of the Commission. The former has the power to strike down proposals on legal technicalities while the latter organizes meetings, agendas and minutes. His control over these areas gives the President further political tools when directing the work of the Commission. This has also increased the presidential style of the Commission President. With the reorganization of leading EU posts under the Lisbon Treaty, there was some criticism of each post's vague responsibilities. Ukrainian ambassador to the EU Andriy Vasilevsky praised the framework and clarified it in his own terms. The Commission president speaks as the EU's government while the president of the European Council is a strategist. The high representative specializes in bilateral relations while the European Commissioner for Enlargement and European Neighborhood Policy deals in technical matters such as the free trade agreement with Ukraine. The President of the European Parliament meanwhile articulates the EU's values. Relationship to European Council Presidency Despite the recent presidential style, the President has also begun to lose ground to the larger member states as countries such as France, Italy, the UK and Germany seek to sideline its role. This may increase with the recent creation of the permanent President of the European Council. There has been disagreement and concern over competition between the President of the European Council Van Rompuy and the Commission President Barroso due to the vague language of the treaty. Some clarifications see Van Rompuy as the strategist, and Barroso as a head of government. In terms of economic planning Van Rompuy saw the Commission as dealing with the content of the plan and the European Council as dealing with the means and implementing it. Despite weekly breakfasts together there is a certain extent of rivalry between the two yet defined posts, including the High Representative. Although there are concerns that competition with the new Council President would lead to increased infighting, there are provisions for combining the two offices. The European Council President may not hold a national office, such as a Prime Minister of a member state, but there is no such restraint on European offices. So the Commission President, who already sits in the European Council, could also be appointed as its president. This would allow the European Council to combine the position, with its powers, of both executive bodies into a single president of the European Union. Following the creation of the European Council presidency, President Van Rompuy and Commission President Barroso competed with each other as Van Rompuy has benefited from the general shift in power from the Commission to the Council yet with Barroso still holding the real powers. At international summits there was no agreement as to who should represent the EU, so they agreed to both go at the same time. Privileges of office, 
the basic monthly salary of the president is fixed at 112.5% of the top civil service grade which, in 2013, amounted to a 25,351 per month or a 304,212 per year plus an allowance for a residence equal to 15% of salary as well as other allowances including for children's schooling and household expenses. List of Presidents, Parties AAAAA A People's Party AAAAA A Alliance of Liberals and Democrats AAAAA A Party of Socialists, see also, Vice President of the European Commission, European Commissioner, List of Presidents of EU Institutions, President of the European Parliament, President of the European Council, Presidency of the Council of the European Union. References, Epping, Dirk Jan. Ian Connity. Life of a European Mandarin. Inside the Commission. Schult, Belgium, Lanou. ISBN A978-90-209-7022-2. Hicks, Simon. What's Wrong with the EU and How to Fix It? Cambridge, United Kingdom, Polity. ISBN A978-0-7456-42054-2. Lendo, Ken. The Presidency of the European Commission under Jacques Delors. Basingstoke, Macmillan. ISBN A978-0-333-72000. A. External links, Commission President, Terms of Office, Organization of the European Commission CVCE, Presidential Candidates Debate 2014.